Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, we will be seeing how to create an entire commercial for a headphone. So first of all, let's look at this 20 odd second commercial video and then we'll see how to create this from scratch. Right, so I hope that you liked that video. There was no sound in it, but towards the end of this video, I will be directing you to a resource, another video of mine where I have shown how to add sound, music, and voiceover in case you want to. But right now, this is the tough part, getting the visuals in the first place. That disintegration effect that really made this ad look very cool was created using Hicks Field. So we'll come to that later on, as you can see here. Uh, for the other videos, uh, image to video generations mainly cling was used i'll show you all that also but everything started off first of all from chat gpt because in instances like this as i've often shown in the tutorials in the past it's always a good idea to create a storyboard first and then start the entire process the links to all the tools and the images have been given in the description so let's get started so the first thing that i did over at ChatGPT was that I was just asking it for some suggestions initially about how to create a video ad in which we can add that disintegration effect. How can we turn it into something commercial? So ChatGPT was giving me a lot of ideas. Ultimately, it suggested me uh, something similar to what you just saw with the headphones or the earplugs. So I just typed in, yes, I like the suggestion about the earplugs. So let's do this. A man looks bored, then puts the headphones or earplugs on, and then he disintegrates. And the next scene shows that he's playing in a rock band in front of a large audience. Uh, so we are trying to say that listening to this music on the headphones makes you feel like you are a rock star. So this is how things started. And then ChatGPT kind of gave me a frame by frame, you know, basically a kind of a written storyboard here. But then I wanted a visual storyboard. So once I went through this, I was pretty happy with it. And I said, okay, fine. So let's start creating the following frames. So I asked it for a six frame storyboard. And each frame was basically what you saw in that video. So you can see first frame, uh, where he looks bored and is just sitting. Then he looks at the headphones, close up of the headphones. He wears the headphones. He's on the stage performing and the product showcase display, the, which was the ending scene. And it straight away gave me this and I was really, really impressed with it. From here on, you can do two things. One is you can straight away from the next prompt, if you like the storyboard, you like exactly what you're seeing, you can start creating these images one by one and get all the six frames ready be before you start generating the videos from them. However, there's no doubt that even with the 4.0 model, it still doesn't produce very real looking faces. So what I thought was, I do like this visual storyboard, but I'm basically going to just take the prompts from here, but create these images in other tools which can produce more photorealistic images like Midjourney. So then what I did was I basically downloaded this image and I opened up a new chat in chat GPT. Let me show you that one. So then I uploaded on a new chat that same storyboard that I had downloaded. And I just said, give the prompt for the first frame in the storyboard. And you can see that just describe this prompt. And then here was the process. I basically took this prompt and I actually used mid journey. Okay, if you want, you can use some other image generating software also. But the reason I really, really recommend Midjourney is because as I've shown often in the tutorials in the past, this is currently the best when it comes to maintaining character consistency, especially when last month in April, they released their Omni reference feature. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link to that in the description of the video. You can check it out later because here consistency is going to be very important because remember we have six frames and wherever that guy comes that you saw in the commercial, we have to keep him consistent and the Omni reference feature is currently the best at it. But for the first one, I didn't even need Omni reference. I was okay with any person that it generates. And then from the second image onwards, we will basically keep the person as the same. So here I basically just copied this prompt like this and that's it. I just had to focus on the aspect ratio and the other things. And for this, since this was going to be converted into a video, I basically chose 16 is to 9. And for this one, you don't have to do anything. You just uh, submit it and you basically wait for the generation. So let's just wait for this. 
All right, so our images are ready and you can clearly see, right? Images like this, they just look much better. If I just go back to ChatGPT, just imagine if we had asked ChatGPT to create this particular image, usually it just creates exactly the same frame that you see in the storyboard. So compare this first image which with what we've got here. This just looks much more photorealistic. So let's say that out of all these, we probably, let's say we like this one. So the next step that you can do is, so I'm just gonna download this image right now. And then from the second step onwards, everything remains the same. It's just that we will be using this image inside the Omni reference feature. So the next step was we go back to this and we say prompt for the second frame now. So it gave me this. So you copy this, you go back here. Again, you do the same thing. The aspect ratio is already there. This time, however, we are going to hit this add images option here. We're gonna uh, put this new image that we had downloaded, the first frame image. And once this is here, we're just gonna drag it over to Omni reference. And that's about it. Because now what's gonna happen is it's gonna analyze the face here thanks to the Omni reference feature. And when it produces this image for the second frame, it's gonna keep that guy there also. So now we can just hit generate. And if we go back to our create tab, let's wait for the second one. So hopefully this one, this one will look something like this, whatever the second uh, frame was that he's just uh, looking at the headphones and the guy will be the same. So let's just wait for this. And you can see that now we have our second frame ready and the best part is the same guy again. So now you can see that this is the second frame. So sometimes these things might happen that yes, he's not looking at the headphones here. First of all, this is not such a big problem because remember this is gonna be converted into a video. There the prompt is gonna direct him to look at the camera or uh, to look at the headphones in this case. So that way the eyes uh, can be changed. Although another thing that you can do is you can just use this uh, you know, here you have the remix option in uh, Mid Journey, and you can just hit the subtle uh, remix, which just means it's gonna use the same prompt. It's gonna create exactly the same image, pretty much the same, only with some subtle changes, and you just make those subtle changes right here in your prompt. So here you can specify or emphasize that he's looking at the headphones, okay? Sometimes you just need to do that. But basically this was the process, and for some of the frames here, we don't obviously need the Omni reference, those are very easy. Uh, for example, the ones where you don't see the guy, like this one and the headphones one. So this is how, uh, this is the process that I use. So let me show you all the six frames which I generated using this. All right, so these are the six images that I got following the same process. So you can see here, just open this up. This was the first one, You're just lying depressed. Then he suddenly notices the headphones. And then it's like a close up of the headphones. Puts on the headphones. This is where the disintegration effect was put. Then we go into his dream where he's playing in front of a crowd and finally the showcase video or the frame right at the end. Now one thing that I haven't done here uh, is because right now my idea is just to show you how to do this but if you're actually doing this commercially it also probably will be important that you need to put your own headphone in place of that. Now for that I have separate tutorials there are two software which do this really well. One is called Cellopic AI, which is gonna work probably in the best way when it comes to product placement or replacement. Second is Ideogram AI's Magic Fill feature. I'll leave both the videos for both the software in the description. If you wanna check out how to do that, you can. In this case, I just wanna proceed ahead directly now because first of all, I was not going for a specific headphone, so here, everything kind of looked consistent anyway. But if you have a logo or something, then that product placement will also be an additional step. But right now, let's move on to the part where I started to turn these into videos. All right, so let's start off with the first frame here. Out of all the frames here, this was the only one where I used a descriptive prompt because I wanted a lot of things going on here. For the other ones, as you're gonna see, I wrote simple lines inside Kling mainly, and for this one, Higgs field. But let's start the, for the first frame, I basically uploaded it on chat GPT. I wanted a detailed prompt about, uh, so turn this image into a video where this man uh, looks depressed as the camera uh, pans. So I wanted a cling prompt for this. And you can see that it gave me a pretty detailed prompt. Now, the fascinating thing about this was that I noticed that for the first time it was showing cling 2.1 master. So this is the latest model that has literally just been released like two or three days back. This is in response to Google's VO3, which is making so much noise. So I definitely wanted to try how this works for a very descriptive prompt like this. So it was a five second output for 100 credits and it did a pretty okay job. So this is the latest and the strongest version.
But what I did was now I don't have access to VO3 because I really wanted to compare how uh, things are going to go. And when I do get access to it, I do plan to make some comparison videos like this. But I do have access to Runway, which is another competitor. And this you can actually use uh, for free. And it's pretty fast also. Uh, free with certain credits. You can see right now I'm down to zero credits here. Uh, but you can see here I uh, use the same prompt, same image. And I actually loved this more than what even Kling 2.1 gave. Now, I do plan to make a separate tutorial where I will compare Kling 2.1 to some of its competitors and even to some of its older uh, models. But you can clearly see here, it's always not a guarantee that the little, latest model, which even costs more, is always going to produce a better result. You just sometimes just don't know. But anyway, I was pretty happy with this. Then it was time to move on to the second image. This was going to be a pretty important image because I actually used it to create two videos here. So let me show you the next part of the video. So for this particular image to video, the prompt was very easy. A man stares intensely at the headphones kept on the table as the camera pans around him. And you can see that this was really, really nice. I think it took me around uh, three tries to get this right because sometimes the camera wasn't panning or something else was happening. But this was really, really nice. Then we move on. Then actually, I use this again, but I'm going to show you that after the third frame. So the third frame was just a simple shot of the camera just zooming into the headphones. And this one, I didn't even care about the result that much because this was just going to be there for like almost a second. But let's see the result. So here the prompt was very easy. The camera zooms in closer to the headphones kept on the table. And this was pretty easy for Kling to execute. And like I said, this is going to be very short in the video. So it didn't really matter too much on the quality front. Then what I did was I actually went back to the last frame because I also used that to create the part where it looks like he's picking up the headphones. So let's see that. So this was the one where I again used the same frame and I said a man extends his hand to grab the uh, headphones kept on the table. Now, this was good till this part, right, where he picks up the headphones. But just see this. Right. Now, this obviously I didn't want to keep in the video, but I thought to myself, even if I can just keep the, uh, the video up till here. That's also just gives you an idea that yes, he's about to just pick them up. So then it was time to move on to this frame. Now this is where Hicksfield came into play. So let's go to Hicksfield AI. So I've got a really detailed tutorial on Hicksfield. If you haven't checked that out, you can uh, watch this particular video later on. I'll leave the link in the description. But basically the difference between Hicksfield and other image to video generators like Kling is that they allow you to first of all put a camera movement or any sort of an effect. And that effect is basically put on the image that you upload here. So again, I did the same thing here that if this effect is the disintegration effect. So if I go over to change here, you will be able to see that. So that's under effects. It's one of the uh, most popular effects on Higgs field. So you can see right here, disintegration. And the, this is just as the name suggests, it's going to do what you saw there. So I put this here and the image and the prompt if we go back here to the videos, the prompt was very easy. I just wrote, you know, a man, dis uh, a man who's listening to the headphones slowly starts to disintegrate. But because you have the enhance on feature, it just enhances the prompt and it kind of just turns it into something like this, like a really long uh, prompt. And the result was right on the first go, it was pretty decent. So you can see here. So this is where we are suggesting that now he's entering his dream. So this was the next part where we had the image of the rock star. So this, for this, I actually tried to use this 3D rotation uh, camera effect or the camera movement that is there by default uh, in Higgs field. I thought maybe it'll just rotate around him as he's singing, but it didn't really work out too well. So ultimately I went over to Kling because what happened here was he was rotating and not the other way around. And this just didn't look good at all. So then I went over to Kling. And this came out really nice. You can see a man performs on a stage. The camera rotates around him. Everything is vibrant and chaotic with the crowd cheering. Handheld shaky footage. The camera zooms in closer to him. And I was really, really impressed with this. You see this. He looks like a very vibrant atmosphere. Very real physics. And I think this was absolutely fantastic. Just imagine this is on 1.6. So I didn't even use the uh, latest model. Finally, it was time to move on to the last frame, which was pretty easy. So again, I used Kling for this. So for this, the prompt was the camera slowly zooms in and rotates around the headphones like it's a product showcase video. So you can see very sim simple prompts also sometimes just give you amazing results like this. And finally, I put all these clips together in Premiere Pro, just added some basic transitions. And this was the result again.
So like I mentioned right at the start of the video, this particular ad did not have any sort of an audio. To be frank, right now, I still haven't been able to find an AI tool which can do this very, very effortlessly. But the closest that we can come to this right now with AI is to use a software called as InVideo AI, where you basically generate a video which has the kind of music and voiceover that you want. And then you extract the audio from it and place it in your video. So I've shown this process in this particular video, which I had released earlier on in my channel. So I'll leave a link to this also in the description and just watch the ending part of it where I show you how to use in video to do this. So in case this video helped you out, do give it a like and if you want to follow along all my experiments in the AI image and video editing world, then make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time.